And now we have Basculin. It was one of the many unique colorful Pokemon added during the creatively abundant Generation 5. Like the Piranha, which forms one of its inspirations, it is as hostile and dangerous as it is small. In the upcoming Pokemon Legends Arceus, we will see it gain a much appreciated evolution into Bascule Legion, whose excellent design holds much promise. To prepare for that, we'll be exploring how Basculin has performed in the competitive scene. And so, we ask, how good was Basculin actually? And in this video, we'll be going over these competitive formats. Boasting good speed and attack, with the latter accentuated by the adaptability ability and even packing useful priority in Aqua Jet, Basculin was a fine offensive water type, though its stats precluded it from higher tier use. It wasn't that fast and it was incredibly frail as well, so it wasn't going to be standing out among competitors like Gyarados and Sharpedo in OU and UU, respectively. But there seemed to be some chance for it to find viability in the lower tiers. Its main problem was that it still had plenty of competition as a physical water type, even down in RU and NU. In RU, it directly competed with another adaptability water type at that. Sure, Crawdon was much slower initially, and it didn't pack Aqua Jet, but its attack stat absolutely dwarfed Basculin's, and it had a vicious secondary stab in Crunch as well. To say nothing of its variety in set, it could run Choice Band, but it could also be an effective Choice Scarfer, and was of course one of the tier's most prominent Dragon Dance sweepers. Basculin was pretty much solely relegated to Choice Band, as it needed all the power it could get. Its speed did give it a small niche as being able to outspeed the likes of Moltres was invaluable and that was something the other physical water types in the tier, Kabutops and Feraligator, couldn't do. But of course there was a reason Tops and Gator were quite common and Basculin was incredibly rare. Despite their lower speed, they were much better Pokemon both offensively and defensively. As such, Basculin's RU viability was just barely acknowledged but it was really more of a technicality. It was more legitimate in NU but not by too much. Its competition still generally outclassed it. Samura and Caracosta were among the most threatening Pokemon in the tier, with a more well-rounded series of attributes, and this time, Basculin couldn't even fully boast the attribute of its natural speed, as it was generally outdone by the much faster Floatzel. Basculin's niche still existed thanks to its raw strength on its waterfalls and aqua jets, as well as its useful access to superpower that let it cleave through irritating would-be walls like Cradilly. However, it was immensely difficult to slot Basculin onto a team. The other waters were generally more useful. Overall, Basculin was not a bad Pokemon at all, it just had a lot of really good competition, which has historically been the case for a lot of water types. The addition of PU in Generation 6 was immensely helpful for Basculin, providing a tier with a lower power level and less competition, at least theoretically. The problem was that Floatzel was one of the tier's very best Pokemon. Basculin only having one physical water type to compete with was definitely nice, but when that one competitor was as good and easy to use as Floatzel, it was still quite difficult to justify fitting Basculin on a team. Though Basculin certainly wasn't bad, it was just outdone by Floatzel so badly, as in addition to its much better speed, Speed, Floatzel could run both physical and special stabs, making it much more difficult to counter consistently with one side of the defensive spectrum. Whereas Basculin's only special attack was Ice Beam, meaning it was forever walled by physical walls that didn't crumple to the move, like Avalog. Furthermore, even if Floatzel was walled, it could unleash its choice item onto said walls thanks to Switcheroo, completely ruining them. Basculin did not have this capability, and was thus eternally stuffed by popular defensive Pokemon like Politoed. As such, Basculin's viability was once again and acknowledge, but it was really more of a technicality, and PU players pretty much always chose Floatzel over it. Even though Generation 7 bestowed upon Basculin a much appreciated improvement to its water stab in the form of liquidation, it wound up being the same story for it in the new rendition of PU, except even harsher. It was already difficult to justify using it when Floatzel existed, but this time it was downright impossible. Floatzel was still a good Pokemon, but nowhere near the metagame defining force it had been in the generation prior. When one already had to work to justify Floatzel's inclusion on a team, there was absolutely no point in trying to justify a Pokemon that was generally so much worse than it. Basculin unceremoniously dropped to untiered, with nary a thought given to it. The smaller Pokedex in Generation 8 was just what Basculin needed to finally find some real viability in PU, as it was no longer surrounded by competition. Furthermore, players began exploring some new options for it. Rather than sticking with adaptability, they began using Reckless as its ability, which pushed the power of its head smash to obscene heights. Bulky water types that would otherwise wall adaptability Basculin, such as Lantern, could no longer switch into it at all, as they would get destroyed. What made it particularly spammable was that the Steel, Fighting, and Ground 
ground types that would resist Head Smash did not want to switch into Basculin, as they feared its liquidation. Reckless was also valuable for giving Double Edge quite a bit of extra power as well, giving Basculin an option with similar power and coverage against would-be switch-ins, whose recoil wasn't quite so devastating. Though Reckless Basculin was its first glimpse of success, it wasn't long before adaptability Basculin, whether Choice Man or Life Orb, also established itself as similarly vicious for the sheer spammable strength of its liquidations, as well as the terrific revenge killing capabilities of its powerful Aqua Jet. Some players began using Blue Striped Adaptability Basculin, though this was quickly put to the side when it was realized that Standard Basculin, even if running Adaptability, could bluff the possibility of running Reckless as its ability, which the Blue Striped variant couldn't do. Regardless of its set, a Pokemon with Basculin speed stat packing such brutally devastating power in a tier with a generally low power level was excellent. It was particularly valuable for outrunning and slamming the Sovali forms, and it quickly became known as a genuine threat in early PU. Some players even began using Life Orb Basculin with special attack investment to destroy the physical walls that wanted to switch into it. Mawile got scalded or hydro pumped, while Shinotic and Gorgeist got ice beamed. Basculin becoming such a threat in PU got NU players to take notice, and it managed to establish itself as a threat there as well. It took its special attacking one step further, running a massively powerful choice spec set whose adaptability water stabs blasted through much of the tier. Even specially defensive Evil like Clefairy got shredded by Hydro Pump. Resisting water wasn't enough to make one safe, as Ice Beam ripped through grasses like Appleton and Eldegoss, while Mudshot tore through Toxicro thinking it was safe and smacked Lantern nicely as well. Of course, Basculin's Choice Band and Physical Life Orb sets were plenty vicious as well. As such, it was a powerful wall breaker in the early stages of both NU and PU simultaneously. Then the Isle of Armor came around, and though Basculin didn't much appreciate the power creep of the expanded Pokedex, it absolutely loved the new move it gained. Flip Turn, a physical water type U-turn, albeit with 60 base power, which was still fine given the adaptability boost. This move was absolutely perfect for Basculin's hit and run playstyle, allowing it to safely spam its water stab while chunking its switch ins and maintaining momentum for its teammates. This new and improved Basculin tore through PU with ease and was banned right away. While NU similarly feared it and also put its status in the tier to an early vote, though it managed to avoid the ban hammer and continue to ravage the tier instead, it was incredibly popular with its spec set being particularly favored among most players. It could still flip turn with ease and wasn't stopped by popular anti-physical attacker tactics like Intimidate, Rocky Helmet, and Burn, letting it rip through the tier with consistent and ease. However, this sadly didn't last. The eventual tier shifts that took place seemed almost designed to completely knock Basculin out of viability, which is what happened. Not only were there solid water absorbers to stuff it in the form of Jellicent, Polyrath, and Gastrodon, but Basculin's speed stat along with its vicious wall breaking power was no longer as unique or valuable with the addition of similarly threatening Pokemon like Galvantula and Whimsicott. Then the Crown Tundra came around, and once again, the expanded Pokedex brought it Power Creep. This resulted in PUBL Pokemon like Basculin to be unbanned. With new water absorbent additions to the tier like Heliolisk and Vaporeon, it wasn't the automatic wrecker of the metagame it had been before, but it was still immensely threatening with its fast, powerful choice ban, choice specs, and mixed life orb sets, crushing much of the tier, letting Basculin find a place on many offensive teams. Eventually, two popular water immunities and Toxic Crook and Heliolisk moved out of PU by usage, letting Basculin spam its stab with far greater ease. It was also particularly dangerous since most of the tier's grass types were offensive, meaning that they took massive damage from its stab despite the resistance. Players even began running Choice Scarf Basculin. It was an excellent late game cleaner against fast, fragile offensive teams and it kept many of their biggest threats in check, all while maintaining momentum against nearly any type of team with Flip Turn. Even the presence of a water immunity on the opposing team wasn't necessarily enough to deter Basculin. The opponent would be so obligated to switch to that water immunity that the Basculin user could read it with the utmost ease and make it accordingly advantageous double switch. Plus, Basculin even began turning the tables on those slow, bulky water immunities eventually by using a substitute toxic set that baited them in and absolutely ruined them. Sure, it lost out on Flip Turn, but it made up for that with the incredible team support of luring and crippling those waters. This was similarly effective against another would-be check, Tangela. And that brings us to the time of this video. Curiously, Basculin's usage is low enough to where it has become untiered, but this is one of the rare cases of such a tiering status not being reflective of its viability, as it remains a valuable piece of PU. To give some perspective, Rotom Frost is one of the best, most defining Pokemon in Gen 5 NU, and it too is untiered. Basculin isn't quite that good, but it's still a solid Pokemon that is used on a good variety of teams. So overall, the 8th generation has been Basculin's best by some 
margin, and it doesn't look to be slowing down anytime soon. And that's it, so how good was Basculin actually? Well, it took quite a while to get going, as for so much of its competitive career, it was outclassed by other offensive water types, especially Floatso. However, thanks to Generation 8's Dexit, it finally took off on a roller coaster of a journey through PU and NU. It almost entirely established itself as a premier threat in both, with a variety of excellent, dangerous sets. Once again flip turned in the Isle of Armor, it was instantly banned from PU and considered for a ban in NU as well. Quite a step up from not being good enough to even be PU at all. Eventually, tier shifts and dex expansions knocked it back down to PU, where it swims fearsomely to this day. Overall, Basculin's had a great redemption arc, and though we have no idea where or how Basculin Legion will fit into the competitive side of things, we very much look forward to seeing it happen. Thanks for watching, everyone, and as always, if you liked the video and you want to see more, be sure to subscribe to Fall Swipe Gaming for more weekly Pokemon content, and in the comments, I want to know, what do you think about competitive Basculin? What would you want on Basculin? Legion to make it good. Whatever it is, let me know in the comments. Also, thank you so much to our patrons for continued support of our videos, and thank you to everyone else watching as well. And follow my crew on these social media platforms. And that's all I got. See you next time, everyone.